Ni hao. Hello. This is the 18th lesson in heat transfer. In the 18th lesson, we will look at external flow Nusselt number correlations. These are the correlations that will be used to ultimately calculate the convection heat transfer coefficient for a variety of flow situations. In the first part of the lesson, we will talk about the difference between a local and an average heat transfer coefficient. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain in your own words what the difference is between a local and an average convection heat transfer coefficient. You should also be able to calculate the average convection heat transfer coefficient from data on the local heat transfer coefficient. On with the lesson. We're thinking about, you know, right now at least, think we're thinking flow over a flat plate. And so if I sketched our flat plate in here, and for the moment, we're just going to say the flat plate is isothermal and has some surface temperature Ts. And we have fluid that approaches this flat plate um, with some approach velocity and some approach temperature that's different than the, than the plate temperature. And you now know, right, that you anticipate that there's going to be a thermal boundary layer that grows over the plate. And the thermal boundary layer is the one that is really important for uh, the convection heat transfer, right? There is also a hydrodynamic boundary layer. It's important. It's important to us in convection heat transfer is only, it's only as important as it is in that it gives us information about what the thermal boundary layer is. Okay. So, I mean, other than that, we don't really care about what it is. It's really what we care about is the thermal boundary layer because that's what's going to influence uh, really strongly influenced the gradient of the temperature at the surface. So um, that's kind of the picture. And we, oh yeah, we also have our coordinate axes. We've been using Y for the axis away from the plate and X to say, this is how far we away, are away from the leading edge. X equals zero is the leading edge. So we, we know that H is a function of X. That was the main idea from, from, from Monday. Right? We sketched H as a function of X and we, we rationalized why H was going to change the way that it was. And that's great, but really what we usually care about, right, is, is the total heat transfer. Like there's some surface, right, that flow is going over. I don't know how much heat is being transferred from the surface into the fluid. So we have, but we want that information, but we know that the convection coefficient varies as a function of, as a function of position. So really right ultimately what we have to do is we have to integrate we have something that varies as a function of position and we want to add it all up right so it means whenever things are varying as a function of position we want to add up that means integration so what we really have to do well not what we really have to do but what, what would be done in, in this integral to get to the total heat transfer rate is to integrate the flux of heat transfer over the area of the plate. So we're integrating over some area that we decide, right? That's what the limits of the integration mean. It's like from nothing, so that would be like the leading edge, to some area. And if you want, you can think about the plate as having some um, width w here. This is a width w. So what I'm saying is we want to know in this little integration, this Q double prime dA represents the heat transfer, right, on some little tiny strip of the plate that has a width W and a, and a thickness dx. And right there, there is some heat transfer rate, right, from the plate into the fluid. And it's given by whatever the flux is on that little tiny strip times the area. That's what that means. And then the integral means we're just going to add those all up all the way up to wherever we, we care about the total heat transfer rate up to. So like up to some position X, right? What's the total heat transfer from the leading edge all the way up to this position X? Okay. Now we know then, right, this, I can look at the geometry and work out that DA has got to be W dx, right? That's just width times, times length. 
So if I make that substitution, right, what I really have is an integral from zero to X then of the flux times W dx. Right? So I'm just gonna integrate over the position from the leading edge out. Okay, and now the flux is given by Newton's law of cooling. It's, it's, it's convection after all. And so um, when I do the integral from zero to X, I put in H times TS minus T infinity. And then I have left over W dx. Now the TS minus T infinity with an isothermal plate is a constant and can get pulled out of the integral. And the width of the plate is whatever the width of the plate is, right? We're not anticipating the width changing as a function of position. So those things both get pulled out. So now I have W times TS minus T infinity times the integral from zero to X of H dx. So that would get us the total heat transfer rate and it would account for the fact that H is a function of position like we know. But we would much, we don't want that, right? Like we know that that's the reality but we hate having to do integrals all the time. So do I, right? And so we don't do that, right? We'd much prefer to have a single number for, number for H that I could multiply by the plate area of interest times the temperature difference and I get the right heat transfer rate, right? This is what we're used to, this is what we want, really. So we can get if this simpler version, if we have the right value of the convection coefficient to substitute in. So that's what we're gonna work out. What is that right value? So if you take this and think about equation one, and this is equation two, they're representing the same heat transfer. So we can set them equal to each other. So put one into two. On the left-hand side, we have this H that we like times A times TS minus T infinity. Um, is equal to everything that was left over, W times TS, T infinity, times the integral from zero to X of H dx. Now this area is the area up to the point of interest. So I can represent the total area, right, as the width times X, right, wherever the X up to the position I'm interested in. That's like the, the, the length of that side of the area of interest, right? So when I make that substitution, H W X times T S minus T infinity is equal to W times T S minus T infinity times the integral from zero to X of H DX. So there's a T S minus T infinity on both sides, right? They can cancel. There's a W on both sides, those cancel. And now I can solve this thing for H it's one over X times the integral from zero to X of H DX. This is what's called an average convection heat transfer coefficient. This is called a local convection heat transfer coefficient. The good news is, is that there are correlations for both. So either we have a correlation for the average or someone's already done the integration and they just give you the result. So you're never gonna have to actually I'm 95% sure that you're never going to have to actually do an integral for this in for me. Okay. There'll be a correlation. So um, that's important. So if we're interested, if someone says, what's the flux at X equal 0.4 meters away from the leading edge at that location, you want to use a local value for the convection heat transfer coefficient because we want to know what's the heat transfer through the little tiny strip at that particular location. That's a different question than what's the total heat transfer out of the plate, including all the heat transfer from the leading edge up to 0.4 meters down the plate. That's a total heat transfer question. So you want an average convection heat transfer coefficient in that case. So just like we have an average convection heat transfer coefficient, we can have an average missile Nissle number basically means the average Nissle number goes with the average convection heat transfer coefficient. And a lot of times you, I don't remember if the book uses X or L, but you'll see for flat plates, either X or L, right? So I, I like to sometimes use L to remind myself, like this actually represents, you know, like the length of a side of the plate, right? Like it's all the way from the leading edge to here. It's not a local position. It represents a distance. That would be the average missile correlation. And then we also have correlations for the local value, which would be H times X over the, the blue thermal conductivity. So the, the local missile number goes with the local convection coefficient and the average missile number goes with the average convection. 